So you just announced this key milestone for your second spaceship, um, basically weight on wheels, meaning a majority of the work has been done. Also, the fact that you're continuing work on the third. How big is this fleet going to get, and how important is the development of this fleet to profitability in 2021? Well, the fleet is really important, and so our announcement yesterday was like a huge milestone for the team. I mean, these are people who have been working on the ship for a while, and to get to the point where all the major structural assemblies are put together and she's resting on her own landing gear was a great moment for the, for the whole team. And the fact that, you know, we're already, as you were saying, you know, well along on the next spaceship is a great sign that we're uh, sort of following through on our plan to, like, build out this fleet of spaceships. And that's important because, you know, just like any sort of uh, business where you need to bring capacity into the market, we want to have not just one spaceship. Obviously, we've got VSS Unity that's been to space already, um, but we want to have a few more. And so our plan is to have uh, five spaceships by 2023, and, uh, and we're, we're making good progress towards that. And certainly I think investors know Virgin Galactic as the first publicly traded space tourism company, but the fact that you do have this wholly owned subsidiary, the spaceship company that is doing all of this work on these vehicles in-house, um, why does it make sense to have it that way, structured that way? Yeah, so we actually didn't start out that way like many years ago, but what we realized was that having that true vertical integration where we can do everything from design to build to test to you know, post-operation support was really important for making good progress quickly and to ensuring that we have like full quality control over the entire like manufacturing stack. So, you know, we now have uh, many hundreds of amazing, dedicated people out in Mojave, California, who are building these vehicles. And then we're going to bring those vehicles down to Spaceport America, where they'll be operated in New Mexico. Are you already integrating some of these hypersonic capabilities into these spaceships? Well, you know, the fascinating thing is, is that we're, like, going to be flying true hypersonic vehicles. We're just going straight up, right? And yeah. one of the aspirations that we have, and as you know, you, you, you're very uh, knowledgeable in this subject, is that we do aspire to build a next generation vehicle that can go point to point. And just imagine, you know, instead of going along at, you know, Mach 0.8, like we always do in, in air, air travel, if you can go Mach 2, Mach 3, Mach 5, just how much that's going to change the planet. Yeah. And in terms of when you would expect to see that point to point type of travel, it's in the coming years, five years, 10 years? Well, I think that we could have prototypes within, you know, five years or so, you know, okay. um, and then, uh, you know, fully certificated vehicles will be a bit uh, behind that. But the fact that we're flying people on board these vehicles and, you know, we're going to have similar thermal protection systems and structural systems and guidance navigation and control systems, those are things that we'll be able to flow through from Spaceship Two, this vehicle that we just, you know, worked on this week and, and, uh, and going forward. Got it. And Boeing's a key investor in Virgin Galactic as well. How much are they working with you in terms of development of these spaceships and also these future hypersonic capabilities, which I keep coming back to because Wall Street's so excited about it? Yeah, they, they are. I mean, you know, Boeing's just, an, you know, obviously an amazing a company. They made a $20 million investment that was sort of coincident with the uh, with the, the uh, our, our public offering. Um, or a closing of our of our public listing. And so, uh, you know, they have got amazing capabilities in hypersonic technology. So how do you actually build these vehicles? Something that can start off on a runway at like zero, zero knots, zero miles per hour, and take that all the way up to a Mach 5 vehicle. They have amazing capabilities there. So our teams are uh, actually doing some really interesting work together as they think through how that will evolve and what vehicles we could build. So you announced this production milestone today. Um, still targeting service, first commercial service, mid-2020. Is that still the plan? So our plan is to, uh, you know, take each step uh, as it comes. We want to be very, you know, safe and progress. But, you know, yeah. we're making good progress. Obviously, our number one priority this year is to fly Richard Branson into space. That's going to be, like, <laughs> a huge moment, you know. Um, it's his 70th birthday, and it's, like, the 50th anniversary of Virgin Group. So we're really hoping to have a, a great, great year. Okay. What are the check? I guess what are what are the key uh, pieces that have to fall into place to get there? So what you'll see is uh, the first bit is we're going to be moving uh, Spaceship Unity, which is the spaceship that's already been to space, down to Spaceport America. So we'll move it down pretty soon, and then uh, we'll do a series of test flights. We'll be looking at systems performance, getting the pilots acclimatized to flying out of New Mexico rather than California. We'll also be doing testing of the cabin itself to make sure that the customer experience is really like as perfect as we as we like it to be when all that is done when we feel really good about it then we'll say Richard you know like let's go and uh, and he will fly and uh, and then we'll see how that goes and and at that point you know um, uh, we will be in a position where we can start thinking about uh, commercial service and I realize you've already got 600 plus people signed up and, and there have been thousands more who have expressed interest what has that interest continued to look like since the company's gone public well, as you know, we're sort of in a pause of sales because we've yeah. got these 600 people and we really want to take good care of them. Um, 
But what's uh, exciting and, and sort of um, uh, great for the company is that, that that number of people who've expressed, I'd like to fly with you, keeps ticking up, you know, by, by a good chunk every month. So, you know, um, we, uh, we think that's a good sign that this is a great market, you know. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, so you know, later on in the year, we'll we'll uh, we'll reopen those sales. And I realize this is a little further out, perhaps, but I, I wonder just how you are assessing the competitive landscape, whether it's Blue Origin when they start offering their space tourism service, or even SpaceX, Elon Musk, SpaceX, who's developing that Starship system that yeah. is also potentially in coming years uh, could be doing point-to-point -point travel. Yeah, you know what I like to say is I, I think I really think that the market is going to be big enough for all of us. You know what the orbital guys are doing, you know, and by that I mean sort of SpaceX and Boeing. You know, uh, Boeing's got their Starliner vehicle yeah. that just flew. Um, that's going to be a different kind of thing than what we're doing, right? We're, th those seats will be in the tens of millions of dollars, which is fantastic, but it's sort of a different thing than something that's in the like hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And, you know, Blue will, I'm sure, offer something great. We think that we're going to have a terrific product, but I think really the main thing is that this is going to be a, 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 a supply-constrained market for the near term, because no matter how much we fly, there's going to be way more people that are going to want to fly into space than, than we can provide seats for at least it's, for the next several years. It's amazing to hear you say that. I yeah. can never totally wrap my head around it. It's, yeah. uh, it's fascinating. Now, we'll uh, look forward to flying you someday. Some, some, uh, yes, gonna, yeah, yeah, yes, you know, please. I mean, first journalist in space, you know, something. Oh, that would, that would be amazing. George Whitesides, thanks for joining us today. Thanks CEO for of Virgin Galactic.